today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a very basic shape, just like you see on the screen here, some basic modeling tools, uh, technical workflows, and overall, a very easy way to make shapes like this inside a blender. So let's get started. If you're brand new to hard surface modeling and wanna learn our entire workflow in about 30 to 60 minutes a day over the next two weeks, we can get you very, very good very quickly. If you wanna learn more about that, check out our Accelerator program in the link below. This has nearly 5,000 students and we're getting them very, very good at Blender very quickly. Again, that'll be linked below. So we're gonna start by adding in a plane and then I'm gonna rotate this plane on the x-axis by 90 degrees. And let's just scale this S, X, and then three on the, uh, the x-axis, obviously. Just make that three times as long. Then I'm gonna go into edit mode here. I'm gonna press Control R to add in a loop cut. And then I'm gonna move this a little bit back on the Y axis like that. And then we're just gonna add in a loop cut here to make these square and then a loop cut over here. So basically when we subdivide this to make it smooth, it'll be even. So basically what we can do is we can go into object mode and press Control 2 on the number pad That'll add in a sub D with two levels. You could also do three if you wanted to. Depends how much resolution you want. I think two is fine here. Then I'm just gonna right click and then go to shade auto or uh, shade smooth. We're not gonna use shade auto smooth just because we're using sub D. Doesn't really matter though. I'm gonna right click and then shade that smooth. It's a flat surface so the auto smooth won't do anything but eventually it will. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into edge mode and we need to add some creases. So I don't actually want these areas here to be rounded out. I want them to be a 90 degree edge. So 90 degree angle rather. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to press shift E, move my mouse all the way to the right. Make sure this is set to a value of one. And then basically what we can do is we can do the same thing for this whole area and just make sure that's creased all the way to a value of one. So now we're gonna have hard edges here on the side, but we're also gonna have this nice rounded area here on the side. And I still have control over that if I wanna kind of move it back a little bit. I can still do that while maintaining the sub D effect. Now at this point, what I wanna do is I want to apply that sub D to lock that in. And then I'm gonna select everything with the A key going to go to X and then limited dissolve and we're going to set this to about 0.1 so um, that didn't actually do too much so maybe a little bit higher until we kind of dissolve out I think that should be enough and then we're going to have some redundant geometry here and we can clean that up by pressing the three key with the machine tools plugin if that still didn't clean up the junk we can just go in here select these vertices and then control X same over here. You could also just symmetrize that control X. And basically all these loops right here are supporting the curvature. As you can see, this supports the curvature, but now I can actually go in here to these vertices. I can press control shift and B on the keyboard. Now in this case, I need to apply the scale. Notice it's a little bit biased in one direction. So I'm going to go into object mode, control A, apply scale. And then I can go back into vertex mode here, control shift and B, scroll up a few times. And then I'm going to bevel to about this point. And then I'm just going to press the C key to make sure that doesn't start overlapping. So press C just like that. And then all we need to do now is remove the redundant geometry. So select everything M and then merge by distance that will merge these vertices together right here at the middle. Now at this point, we have a pretty clean shape. If this, uh, if these pink lines right here bother you, you can actually just, you know, go here to the end panel and turn the mean crease down to zero. It's not being used anymore because we've already applied the sub D and we already have the shape. So the mean crease won't do anything. We can just turn that to zero to get rid of it. Uh, you can keep it if you want, it really doesn't matter. Now what I want to do is I want to extrude this and then I want to scale this on the Y axis, so S, Y, and then zero, like that. Just so I kind of have this shape, so it's curved over here, but it's flat over here. And you're gonna see the shading's a bit messed up, so to fix that, we're just gonna select everything, and then Shift N to recalculate those normals. And then what we can do is we can right click and use a Shade Auto Smooth to get those nice 
hard edges right there. All right, so at this point, we can go into face mode right here. We can select maybe these faces right here, and then I can actually just go in and extrude that a little bit, maybe to about there. And then I'm just gonna move this object a little bit on the Y, maybe to about that point. And then I can just go ahead and add a mirror modifier. Now I'm gonna do this with hard ops. I can just press Alt X and then go here, add in a mirror modifier like that. And then you can kind of choose, you know, how close you want this to be, how far, maybe right about here is good. And then I can just go in, I can apply that mirror modifier, and now I have this shape right here. So at this point, I'm going to go into edge mode, and then I'm just going to bevel these edges right here. But before I do that, let me just select everything. I'm going to go to X and then limited dissolve. And then I'm going to set this to point 0.1 because I just want to dissolve out the flat areas right here. You're going to see it gets rid of the junk. And now I can just go in here. I can select these edges and then control B, maybe to about that point all the way if you want to do that. And then I'm just going to select everything because we have a, you know, overlapping edges here from the bevel. And then we can press M, merge by distance, and that'll clean that up. So now we have this shape right here, which is exactly what I want. And then what I want to do is I want to go into the side view, shift A, we're going to add in a cylinder. I'm going to set the cylinder here to 64 vertices and then right click. We're going to shade that auto smooth so it's nice and smooth, as you can see. Then we'll just rotate this 90 degrees, scale that down a bit, and then move this over to here. And then just kind of position this in a good location. And then what I can do is I can go in and I can run a difference boolean right here on this side. Just kind of scale it to whatever size you want. And then I'm just going to press Alt X with hard ops and then mirror to the other side of the grid right over here, as you can see. Cool. So that is looking pretty decent. I like how that looks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into edge mode and then we're just going to select this entire set of edges here. So all the way around, you can control click or use mesh machine and then control B to add in a chamfer just so we have that effect right there. And we can always mirror to the other side. So alt X and then mirror to mirror that to the other side like so. Now what I want to do is I want to go to this Boolean and simply apply it. Okay. So I'm going to go to apply. And now what I want to do is I want to select this outer set of edges and then just bevel that with a chamfer. And if that's not letting you bevel, let me just uh, connect these up with the J key and then dissolve that out. Then we can go here and then connect this up with the J key and then dissolve this out with control X as well. That'll give us a better, more perpendicular connection point. And then I can just go in here, select these, run a chamfer to about there, just like that. Um, this is a little bit messy. I could just dissolve that out. And then again, we can just, um, you know, utilize a mirror modifier to speed that up. And now what I want to do is I want to go in here. I want to press control R click. I'm going to press E and then F to flip it to here and then control R again, E and then F to flip it to the right side like so. And then I can just go into face mode, alt click this loop of faces and then E to extrude right click and then alt s to scale along the normals like that and maybe just add a small uh, bevel modifier kind of like that as well looks pretty good honestly i could even go in here and maybe make that a little bit larger might look more interesting and we can just add a small bevel modifier right here and i could even scale that a bit on the y just to kind of add some more visual appeal to it some more dynamic elements kind of like that and I think that looks pretty decent. So far, so good. So just adding bevels, just adding echoed shapes, basic stuff like that can make it look a lot better. And then I'm gonna go in here to these edges. Now for this, you might want to maybe change these connection points. So maybe I could just connect this to this and then just dissolve out this one like that. And then I could just go in and maybe select this area here now again, I have a mirror, so I don't need to select the entire you know, area. Just to about there is fine. And the mirror is gonna take care of the rest. 
So then I could just press Control B to bevel, and you just see why it's not beveling more. I think just the mirror, which is fine. We don't need to bevel that much anyways. We can just add a very small one there on the inside. And then at this point, I'll just go ahead and apply that mirror modifier, keep the bevel live in the stack, and then we're gonna have this shape right here, as you can see. So now what I wanna do is I wanna add in some tertiary elements. So I'm gonna go into the top view here. I'm gonna press Shift A. I'm gonna go to Mesh and then Cube. Then I'm just gonna scale this down. I'm gonna rotate it a bit position this right about here and then just kind of move this up and then run a difference boolean right here on the object and we can just kind of figure out you know where we want to place that and then I'll just go ahead and mirror this to so alt x I'm going to change this over to cursor we can mirror to that side and then mirror to this side as well just to kind of create a small tertiary element like that and then a mirror to the bottom as well, so it's on all the sides, just like that. Now, I wanna show you a pretty cool operation that you normally cannot add in vanilla Blender just because it's not a physical tool in Blender. So what we can actually do in Hard Ops, or specifically Box Cutter here, is I can go into the top view, I can maybe add in a cube, scale that down, scale it a bit on the X, and then a bit on the Z, and then what I can do is I can shift click on this object and then run a difference boolean. But I don't actually want a difference boolean. I'm gonna go here and change this over to inset. And what this will do is it'll add an inset boolean. Now it doesn't always work the best. You have to kind of change, it's a little bit buggy, but if you change the size right here, it'll eventually work. So I can just turn off overlays and then just kind of figure out, you know, which, uh, size works the best so maybe I could go right to about there and then you're gonna have a little inset boolean right there on the inside as well which maybe you want I think it looks pretty good another thing you could do if that's a little bit buggy is you could just stick with a difference boolean kind of add in a shape like that and then what I could do is I could run a boolean on the boolean so check this out if I duplicate this and then scale this a bit on the X and then a bit on the Y and then I run, maybe a bit on the Z, and then I run a Boolean on the Boolean, this will remove the middle part of that Boolean right there, and then I can just kind of get some pretty cool, you know, fancy effects here in the middle. I could maybe scale that down. I could even go into edge mode and control A to apply scale and even bevel that right there and get some pretty, you know, interesting shapes kind of like that. So maybe I could go in and then what I could do is I could literally go to this cutter, keep that Boolean applied. So literally apply that Boolean and then I could just go in here and then just select this set of edges. It's a bit hard to see, but select these edges right here. And I don't know if I have it all selected. Let me check. So matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll just apply this Boolean on the main object. It'll be easier that way. And then I can just go in here, uh, maybe, maybe I could use a symmetry because right now we have some really, really bad connection points. You can kind of see that right here. So what you can actually do is you can select everything, mesh, symmetrize, and then go on the negative X to the positive X. And that'll add a line straight through or an edge straight through the middle. And then I can just go in and dissolve out all of this junk here that I don't need. Then I can literally go in. Let me just uh, clear that sharp marking. And then I could just bevel that. And then obviously I could mirror, you know, to the other side as well. And now I have a cool little bevel transition right there on the side. Like you can see there, looks pretty cool. And there you go. Now, before I end off the video, if you want to learn our entire hard surface modeling workflow in under two weeks with about 30 to 60 minutes a day, we are running the best hard surface modeling training on the market. We have over nearly 5,000 students at this point. You can see all the results on the screen right now. We'll get you very, very good at Blender in a very short period of time. We've condensed down the entire workflow 
into about two week period with just 30 to 60 minutes per day of practice. So if you wanna just you know skip the line and get very good at this workflow in the shortest time possible, then check out our accelerator program and the link in the top of the description. It's gonna be cheaper to just invest in that than it is to spend all this time learning will shortcut the process for you. So if you wanna learn more about our accelerator program, click the link in the pinned comment or in the top of the description to learn more. We'll get you very, very good very quickly. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.